Next up, uh, Senator King from the Rules Committee. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thanks for holding this hearing. Uh, a quick question for Mr. Salisis. Uh, I know the Defense Department has its own intelligence service, the DIA, and uh, this is a question for the record. I would appreciate it if you would check uh, and provide to the committee whatever there are in the way of intelligence products that were available to the Department of Defense in the week prior to and the day, particularly the day prior to uh, January 6th. Uh, and they can be uh, submitted in, uh, uh, in a classified setting if there are issues of, of sources and methods. I don't know if there's any such material, but if there is, uh, I hope you will make it available to the committee. Uh, General Walker, you're a very important witness today because you were in the midst of all of this and you were in touch. And what we're really struggling with here is why that long delay? And you, you testified earlier that in the summer, the delay was a matter of minutes. Uh, this time it was a matter of, of three hours and 19 minutes, I think the Senator Portman said. The question is, was the delay caused in your judgment from being on these various phone calls by anything remotely resembling politics and a desire not to interfere with this particular group? Or was it because of the, I think the word blowback has been used, uh, the concerns about uh, what had happened in the summer and the criticism that the Guard had taken uh, for its actions at Lafayette Square or in other parts of the protests of the summer. What do you think was going on here in terms of why this matter uh, took so long to, to respond to? So Senator King, I think it was a combination of both. In my judgment, it was uh, two factors. So I had the benefit and comfort of having the Secretary of the Army co-located with me during the summer. So he was right next to me for pretty much that entire week the first week of uh, June, and I was in constant communication with him. I had his, um, his phone number, he had mine, and we communicated regularly. I, I didn't have that benefit uh, for, June, for January 6th. So, so there was some concern. I don't think it was so much of what the District of Columbia National Guard and, and Guard Nation did for, for June. I think it was more um, the word that I was I kept hearing was the optics of it. And there was a concern that it could inflame the, uh, the protesters. So a uniform presence of guardsmen, U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force uniforms could inflame the, uh, the protesters. That was a concern as well. That was a thought by, by Army senior leaders. And the, and the optics that you mentioned, that's sort of in this context become a, a bit of a pejorative term, but what they were really worried about, in my understanding, is the visuals of armed troops uh, and military vehicles and barriers surrounding the United States Capitol. Ironically, that's what we ended up with. But is that what is that the concern that you that you uh, discerned in those conversations? Well, Senator, no, nobody was talking about being armed on January 6th. We were talking about physical presence, civil disturbance, equipped guardsmen to form a line with the United States Capitol Police and the Metropolitan Police to restore order and prevent the Capitol from being um, breached. And, but there's no question that the day before, or the days before, the, the city made it clear that they did not want the National Guard at the Capitol. Is that, is that accurate? No, no sir, the, the city doesn't have uh, standing at the Capitol. So the, the city, the mayor's request and the the Director of Homeland Security, Dr. Rodriguez's request, did not talk about the Capitol at all. Okay, so the, the request from the city was, was directed toward the traffic, stop, uh, traffic control and, the, and those kinds of things away from the Capitol? Yes, sir. Let's, let, let's move from history to where we, what we learned from this. In your, in your view, should there be changes in the process or changes in the chain of command uh, in an emergency situation uh, to enable the National Guard, whether it's you here in the District of Columbia or a National Guard unit in New York or San Francisco or Austin, Texas, uh, should this be something that we're concerned about, uh, the three hours of reaction in a, in a true emergency situation uh, seems to be something we need to, we need to figure out how to avoid. 
If I can answer it two ways, I think you should be concerned that Chief Sun uh, was not allowed to contact me and ask for help uh, in advance. So then we could have had the right forces uh, positioned to support the Capitol Police and protect the Capitol. That, that's, that's one. No, number two, the, the, um, the request did take too long. The, the, the response to the request took too long. So I think there needs to be a study done to make sure that that never happens again. Uh, it, it shouldn't take three hours to, to either say yes or no to a urgent request from, from either the Capitol Police, the Park Police, uh, the Metropolitan Police Department. In an event like that where everybody saw it, it should not take three hours. But, but before it, it, that would have happened, I think the Capitol Police should have been empowered to request National Guard assistance um, in enough time that we would have been there ready to have a large quick reaction force sitting possibly at the armory, possibly closer to be ready to respond and not be late to need. So, so the limitation on the Capitol Police ability to, to li liaise with you uh, prior to the event was a was an issue, but I, I want to get to the to the larger issue of of, of being able to react and, and should we have a, a contingency plan? Should there be an after action assessment within the Department of Defense uh, about those three hours and how to uh, empower uh, the local leadership such as yourself to react in an extraordinary emergency uh, so that you don't have to go through whatever it was that caused the delay, whether it was communication or chain of command or consultation. Uh, but clearly, uh, again, this could be an, an emergency in another city uh, under entirely different circumstances. Uh, so, don't you think it would be prudent for us to have a, a cont contingency plans that would course. be yes, uh, more expeditious? So emergency uh, authority, um, 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 to act in an emergency, to, to witness what occurred and to be able to respond, yes, I think going forward, somebody should consider uh, at the Department of Defense, should consider how the District of Columbia National Guard is, is able to respond in a much more expeditious manner. Or the National Guard in other parts of the country. Thank you very much, General, for your yes, testimony. Sir. Thanks to all of you, and thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for uh, again, for this important hearing. Thank you. Uh, during uh, today's uh, testimony, uh, two memos have, have uh, been discussed, uh, one on uh, January 4th and one on uh, January 5th. Uh, from Ryan McCarthy to Major General William Walker. Uh, one of those documents have already been entered into the record. Without objection, I'd like to enter the memo dated uh, the 5th of January 2021 from Ryan McCarthy to General Walker. Without objection, uh, be entered. <laughs> 